there are a lot of different ways that people are kind of interpreting it. It's this big buzzword that everyone's using, but in a simple form, obviously, it just stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. But uh, I think the emphasis that's been placed on it recently has just been that we need to really direct teachers in understanding that these are important, that we're raising up the next generation that are lacking in these skills, and we need to put some more emphasis on those. I, however, believe that it's not just doing more of the same, more science classes, more technology, more engineering, but it's a getting teachers to recognize the other STEM areas. So if you're a science teacher, recognizing the importance of engineering, understanding the importance of math in your own classrooms, and allowing teachers to reach out to one another. So the STEM isn't still just more of the same, it's more of reaching out and, and allowing these teachers to talk to one another and getting to help students make those connections between all of the classes that they're taking uh, in the STEM areas. And as far as why it's important, you know, it's, it's, right now it's a buzzword and people are kind of using it a lot, uh, but it is, we're raising up that next generation. I would say the first reason why it's so important is because a lot of teachers do believe in inquiry. And I know I was always proud when I got to the point where I did a lab where students could solve a problem that I posed, but I wouldn't tell them how to do it. You know, I'd say, okay, here's the problem. What do you want to do? How can you answer it? And I was so proud to be able to do that. And it is, it's, it's a very freeing thing to have the students write a procedure to solve a problem. But that still isn't even the highest level of inquiry. The highest level of inquiry is when they are passionate about something themselves and they want to answer a question. And so having students do a research project allows them the freedom to go, what do I care about? What, what do I want to solve? And, and then they get to work through that process themselves. So it allows for that really high level inquiry. I believe another reason is that this nature of science thing that we know is important, um, it's very difficult to teach to someone. They have to experience the nature of science. And so allowing them to do a research project allows them to experience the messiness of science, the non-direct, you know, how, how it really actually happens. A lot of them that frustrates because they think science is this rigid thing of steps that I can memorize, but that's not what science is at all. And, and allowing students to do research allows them to see that they get to add to what it is that scientists do. So, so they realize that the more you know, the more you know you don't know. And that frustrates a lot of students. And I go, no, this, this is it. This is what science is. And they, they do end up getting it, but they're very frustrated in the beginning to go, well, I asked this question, and now I have like six more questions. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly what you want to be doing. And that really is what science is. So that's another really important reason that students should be doing research. And I think another one is that it fosters this natural curiosity that they had when they were three, and they would ask why about everything. Well, somehow it's like they get through the school system and they stop asking why. And, and, and you ask them to do it, you know, when they get into the high school level, and they're like, just tell me what I need to know. And, and that's very frustrating when you're trying to get them to think on their own. And so the research projects allow students to to go back to those roots that they had when they were young and to start asking questions and, and allow their curiosity to lead them through their project. A lot of them, again, have this stereotype of what science is and it's just not correct. And the other thing I think that allowing students to do research allows them to do is to not just memorize facts, but to learn content in context of something that they really care about and so the learning part is just the natural part. It's not the thing they have to do. It's that, well, I need to figure out how to solve this problem. And in order to do that, I need this information. And so it becomes naturally integrated. And so they need to learn how to do good research skills. How do I identify credible sources? How do I figure out what it is that um, will help me answer my question? You know, can I just do a Google search and find what I want? You know, those sorts of things. Databases and, and learning how to use your library and your librarians in an effective way. Science a lot of times is taught as facts, and, and, and doing research allows them to gain skills. And, and they're, they're the high-level thinking skills, they're asking good question skills, but it's good research skills, how to identify credible sources, how to uh, relish in these, these moments of spontaneous learning, uh, the things that you can't teach students, they have to just experience them. And I think, too, communicating science ideas. Um, I've had parents before get mad at me because I was giving them a grade on how they were speaking about their science project. Well, that's an English thing. 
No, scientists have to be able to communicate their findings or they're no good. They're no good to the community if they cannot communicate what it is that they're learning. And so uh, being able to write scientifically, clearly, and then communicate those results is another skill that they gain by doing research. I just think that that's one of the things that's so great about doing research, is that there's something for everyone. So there is something to challenge each student, no matter how high of an achiever they are or how low of achiever they are. And there's something to, um, that they can relish in, that they really, really enjoy. And so there, what may frustrate one will excite another, and, and those flip-flop. And you get to see students who maybe didn't do real well when you were teaching in a traditional manner, but when you get, set them free on their own research project, they can completely take off where it cripples another student. And so you, you get this one student who maybe wasn't doing so well before helping you know, previously a student who's really struggling with the proposal process. And so there's a collaboration feeling among, among the students, and it's, it's really quite empowering to all the students. So some really struggle with the idea of just coming up with an idea, what I want to study. Um, students have a tendency to be like, I'm going to solve cancer, I'm going to, you know. And then you have some who are like, I want to study this particular gene on, you know, on a DNA. And you're like, what? Uh, and, and so it's getting them to find a topic that's actually researchable at the level that, that the resources that they have. And then you have some that, that don't like the tediousness of data collection. And some absolutely are like, oh my gosh, I would love to do this every day. And, and then in others, it's the scientific writing. Some it's the learning how to cite uh, credible sources. And others, it's getting up in front of others and you know, having to articulate what it is that they learned. So there's something for everyone to challenge them and to help them excel and feel good about themselves. As for teachers, um, there's a couple things that, that often challenge them. I think the first is that they have to give up control of content and they don't always want to do that or, or like well I have standards I have to meet and, and there's this balance of you know how what do I control what do I not control how do I allow this project to be the students and yet meet the goals that I need to for my course and those are you know very important that we need to address and so finding that balance is, is, is um, definitely a challenge for teachers and and I would just encourage them to ask questions, you can direct students by the way that you are asking your questions so that you are meeting your goals. The other challenge for teachers is managing projects. And that's the thing that, that can be overwhelming and that's actually what keeps a lot of teachers from doing it. Well, all these students are doing totally different, unrelated projects. How do I keep track of all those things? And that's one of the things I try and do in my book is provide tips for how you manage groups and also how to use Web 2.0 tools in order to help manage um, and oversee those projects and also to encourage collaboration uh, among the students as well. Um, and so teachers do have support through the STEM Research Handbook to, to do those things. When a student comes in and they go, I totally get cells now. They come in and they go, it all like clicks. All the stuff maybe we had been talking about, they come in and they are on fire. They like get it because they've been able to connect it to something that they're passionate about. And uh, I've had just handfuls and handfuls of students who do go into the STEM fields because they got to experience something that they were passionate about and they absolutely relish in it. And so they come back and it, it excites them in all different areas and, and it even can bleed into their other courses because they somehow get when I have control of what I learn, it really is actually very fun and very cool. So that's been hugely rewarding. I also am in contact with students after they graduate. And even students who don't go into the STEM fields, the thing they are most appreciative of is I know how to write a paper. I know how to articulate my thoughts. I know how to cite what it is I've learned. I can dig for information. I can find credible sources. I know how to use databases and it has made their life a, a whole lot easier in college no matter what areas they go into. I think the one thing that makes this book unique maybe compared to others that are out there, and most of the books out there that talk about research are geared more towards middle level, and this is more high school or undergraduate, is the literacy aspect of it. I think a lot of science teachers are scared to take on something like this because of the research aspect. Like, I have to teach them how to use a library. I need to teach them how to take notes. How do I do that? Uh, writing a paper. I don't like writing papers. How can I expect my students? Uh, you're going to expect me to grade spelling. And, and this book, I hope, gives science teachers 
the encouragement to go, you can do this. And yes, you do have a right to grade writing. You do have a right. You actually have, or you really should be doing this. This is important that you do this. And so the book, because I am a science teacher and an English teacher, I kind of can straddle and, and hopefully give science teachers the confidence that they need to go ahead and push forward. I would recommend that, that the science teachers talk to their English teachers and do as much collaboration as they can so that they, they feel good about what it is that they're doing and they're not fighting the English department, that they are um, maybe using the same citation, you know, documentation style that they're going to learn or that they have learned. So, that, so that's why I do promote the MLA um, style of citation in my book. And I think that that's really important. And then the scientific writing, what I have found so interesting with students is that they will, the students who think they enjoy writing are like, oh, I can write a paper, no problem, this is easy. And, and they're the ones who end up maybe not liking scientific writing. And the ones who are like, oh, I have to write a paper, they're like, I can write science. They get it. It's, it, it's enough different that it may attract a different group. And so um, allowing that to ignite students uh, and, again, giving teachers the, the support that they need to be able to do that effectively. I would say yes and no. Uh, some administrators are the ones that are pushing it because they hear STEM and they're told they need to do STEM and so they're like, this has the word STEM on it, let's do it. And the teacher has to go, whoa, what am I supposed to do? And, and so this, this handbook will help them you know, do that in, in a way that is constructive. Uh, on the other hand, there are teachers who maybe will want to do this and like you said, we're in a standard-based society and it's tough when, you, when you're fighting that. And so the, the, the power of doing this type of activity, I think um, working with other teachers, being in contact with others who have done it and, and have an arsenal of here's positive feedback of, of, wo of what students gain from this can be a very powerful motivator. Um, when you're convincing administrators to do it. You absolutely need administrator support because you're talking a lot of time, you're talking about out, the kids will be doing a lot of stuff outside of school, there'll probably be parent phone calls with parents who aren't happy about the science experiment that's going on in their basement or, or whatever. So you know, the administrative support is really important for doing these type of projects.